another episode of Going All In, Get the Edge You Need to Succeed. I'm Dr. Erin McKinley, and today we have another awesome spotlight session with Jennifer Tomesco from the Rutgers University Graduate Future Education Model Program based in Newark, New Jersey. All right, welcome, Jennifer. Welcome to the podcast to get us started today. Just tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey to RD, and how you landed at Rutgers. Thank you. Well, my name is Jennifer Tomesco, and I'm the program director at Rutgers School of Health Professions, and I direct the entry-level Master of Science in Clinical Nutrition. Well, my journey to be an RD, I did my bachelor's degree at the University of Delaware, and then I went on to complete a combined master's with dietetic internship at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And then after that, I, I worked for quite some time in clinical nutrition. I worked for Sodexo pretty much my whole career as a practitioner. And I worked in nutrition support. And then I became a clinical nutrition manager for 14 of my years with them. But along the way, I decided to get a doctorate degree. And I have a doctor of clinical nutrition and I got that with UMDNJ, which is actually now Rutgers. And I finished that about 12 years ago. And then <laughs> I, I always knew I wanted to work in academia. So while I was a clinical nutrition manager, I always had an adjunct faculty role teaching medical nutrition therapy. And I love teaching the students. So when an opening came up, at Rutgers School of Health Professions, I, you know, I, I took that job and I started teaching in a coordinated program, which was a bachelor's degree program, which actually was only for dietetic technicians that ended up um, taking that route to get their RD. And then in 2017, we applied to become a future education model program. And then I moved into the program director role for that. And here I am. <laughs> and I, you know, it's been a great journey. And I love being a registered dietitian. And I love teaching students. All right. Well, tell us all about your program. Okay. So our program is a graduate future education model program. And we are actually the first accredited program in the US. We received full accreditation in the spring of 2018. And we're a program that integrates a master's degree with supervised experiential learning, or that's another word for internship. So it's actually a nice program that completes two things at once. So we're located in Newark, New Jersey, which if you've ever driven up to the East Coast and you're on lovely New Jersey Turnpike, <laughs> and um, you might pass by um, our campus, but actually here's a picture of our building at the School of Health Professions. And we actually are located around a lot of nice inter, um, interprofessional teams. We have the medical school, New Jersey Medical School right across the street. We have Rutgers School of Dental Medicine across the street from us and University Hospital. So it's a nice interprofessional feel when you're getting to work with all the other students. And the School of Health Professions is located, as I mentioned, on the Rutgers Newark campus, but we actually have a few different campuses. Um, I'm just going to switch here. We have the Rutgers Biomedical and Health Sciences campus, that's what our program is a part of. There's actually Rutgers University in New Brunswick, Rutgers University in Camden, and then a rather, another Rutgers University in Newark. So we're RBHS if, if you ever choose to apply to us. So what I wanted to go over for you all today is just review what our program actually is you know, a little bit about our department and curriculum, go over some of the program highlights, what our admission requirements are, 
go over some program tuition costs and fees, and then I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. So why would you like to, you know, attend the School of Health Professions and Rutgers? We have over 40 years of history of educating students, and we're the nation's largest health profession school. We have over 35 professions ranging from certificates to doctoral degrees, and more than half of them are online. So before the pandemic even started, we we're used to teaching students online. So we have a lot of expertise in this area. There's more than 1500 students and more than 600 of them, you know, have been online learners. We have more than 400 faculty, over 10,000 alumni, and we have more than 41 states represented and more than 15 countries represented. We're the number one School in the Nation, ranked by College Factual for the best US colleges for health professions. And, you know, we're Rutgers. We are a Big Ten University. No matter where you live, you are able to attend the school and pay in-state tuition. So you could be in Louisiana, in California, in China. It doesn't matter. You'll still be paying the same in-state tuition as someone in New Jersey. Your first semester, when I go over the curriculum, you'll see um, you could live anywhere. It's the second semester that you would actually need to be where your actual supervised experiential learning site was. And then when you finish this program, you will end up with your master's degree and then a verification statement to be able to sit for the registration examination for dietitians. So you know, that's a plus. In just 16 months, you'll have that degree and the verification statement. So our program, as I mentioned, it is a new program. It's a graduate future education model program. It is 42 credits, which spans over just four semesters. Students start in the fall, and then it continues the spring, summer, and then a following fall semester. This is 11 credits of supervised experiential learning or in the regular ASCEND curriculum, uh, the internship, and then it has 31 credits of didactic courses. All of the courses are conducted virtually online and we use Zoom and we have synchronous sessions. So just because your classes are online, you are live. We use Zoom technology and you're in a classroom with all of your classmates and faculty for each week, each class, about two hours a session. So you are not going to feel that you're learning the material on your own. It is very hands-on. We use the flipped classroom model approach where you have access to materials, the lectures, the readings, the audio prior to entering the live Zoom classroom. And when you get to the classroom, we do a lot of hands-on case studies, problem-based learning. We work in groups. We do as much as we can to get you ready for entering your supervised experiential learning. There is a requirement for students to come to Newark, New Jersey for three three-day workshops. And these happen during the months of March May and December. And during these workshops, students um, really get to bond with each other and you get key elements taught to you. During the March workshop, it's really an orientation to your clinical experiences and your supervised experiential learning. During May, the workshop has a research focus because during the summer and fall semesters, you will be starting your research projects. And in December, this is your final on-site uh, campus visit where you'll be doing research presentations and completing um, your final OSCE, which is an objective structured clinical examination. And we also provide for students a review workshop for the RD exam. Then we we use the terminology clerkship for our experiences for our supervised, ex, um, supervised experiential learning instead of internship. So if you hear me 
say that. That's what we call our internship. Our School of Health Professions uses that term in the PA department, nursing, pharmacy, so we use that too. So you will complete clerkships through the months of March through December in leading healthcare settings. And we actually have two tracks. You could be local in New Jersey or at a remote location and we use Veterans Affairs facilities and we have sites in Colorado, Florida, Indiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And students do not need to find their sites. We have contracts with all of our sites, whether you're in New Jersey or you're at a remote location. So that burden is taken away from the student because a lot of distance internships do require that. So what sets Rutgers apart from other programs? I think that our clerkship experiences definitely set us apart. We're very clinically focused. So if you're looking for a career in clinical nutrition, this is definitely a program for you. We focus on weeks in medicine and surgery, interprofessional education, ambulatory care, long-term care and rehab, health promotion and wellness, higher acuity medicine and surgery, critical care and nutrition support, and food service management. We also are a competency-based education model, and this is part of the future education model, and it does allow students to advance at their own pace. Um, students may be achieving competencies at a faster pace or a slower pace than others, and it might allow students to see patients at our higher acuity than other patients. Um, it allows for more frequent feedback from faculty and preceptors. Part of our program, we have students receiving evaluations weekly from preceptors at their sites. And then after each semester, they're getting a summative evaluation. And students really have reported liking that because they know where they stand at each week of their program and they're able to really focus on which competencies need improvement. As I mentioned, we do use that flipped classroom approach and it really helps to integrate the application of real world dietetics practice. We use a simulated medical record in our coursework and you know, it really helps students extract data from the medical records and we apply that to the case studies that they're using when they're writing ADIME notes, doing the nutrition care process. And our preceptors have said that when they're first starting in their clinical sites, that they're much quicker utilizing the medical records and they are quicker writing their first ADIME notes. We also really focus on developing your clinical skills and nutrition focused physical examination and assessment. We have a whole course devoted to that and faculty in our department have been teaching that since the 80s. They've been um, some of the pioneers of nutrition focused physical exam. We've been um, developing research skills and evidence-based practice and everything that you do, you'll be supporting it with evidence and learning how to search the literature. What also sets us apart, as I mentioned, we are the first accredited program as a future education model, but we aren't new to dietetics. The department has had a dietetic internship and a coordinated program for over 35 years we decided to reorganize those programs because by 2024, a master's degree was going to be required to sit for the RD exam. CDR made that requirement. So we decided to change our programs that only had the bachelor's de degree requirement into this future education model. So we just made a shift. So as of 2017, we stopped admitting students to our coordinated program and our last students are graduating this year and our dietetic internship became inactive in 2019. And this model also gives you an opportunity to implement more advanced principles and enhance competencies. And this future education model using competency-based education isn't anything that's new. All of the other health professions use this type of model in their education process. 
um, we're just one of the last ones to jump aboard the train and, and do it. So it's not that it's something brand new. So this is what our curriculum looks like. The first fall, there's 15 credits and we have all didactic courses. We have an evidence informed practice course. As I mentioned, we have a nutrition focused physical exam. There's a counseling class where we do a lot of role playing each week over Zoom. And you may play the role of a patient, a counselor, and we do that across the lifespan. We have another clinical nutrition and medical nutrition therapy course with really, which really dives into the pathophysiology and a pharmacology seminar. And I do have to say that many of our preceptors are actually jealous of students having this course. And we try and complement what's being taught each week across the courses. So if students are learning about diabetes and medical nutrition therapy, we try and synchronize the medications being taught in pharmacology the same week. Then in the spring semester, we have a second medical nutrition therapy course and a management and food service course. And then that is also when your first clerkship experience begins. In the summer semester, you have a global and public health nutrition course, the first clinical and practice-based research methods course, the second clerkship experience, and in the fall, an ethics and leadership course, capstone project, and a clinical nutrition and dietetic clerkship three. So I do have to say we don't have a thesis with this program. There's just not enough time, but the research methods and capstone project do end up um, with a nice outcome for students. You end up creating or taking a clinical question and developing an abstract and poster presentation, which you're able to submit to a national conference. Last year, our students, um, three of our groups out of the four, did submit to FENCI and did present posters at the virtual FENCI in October. And then this year, our graduates are just submitting their six groups of students and will be submitting to either FENCI or ASN. This is what our clerkship curriculum looks like. So there's a total of 31 weeks moving forward. Clerkship one is nine weeks, and that is the medicine and surgery and food service management. Clerkship two is the interprofessional education, long-term care and rehab, ambulatory care, health promotion and wellness. And clerkship three is the higher acuity medicine and surgery, critical care, and a culminating staff relief. So, the order of things may vary among students and the way things are scheduled at your sites, but clerkship three pretty much stays the same and you're ending with the culmination of your staff relief. And by the end of this, you're showing or demonstrating that you're able to perform all of the competencies at an entry level, that you're able to enter the field as an entry level dietitian. And I do have to say when I do exit interviews with our students, they feel that they're ready to enter the field as an entry-level dietitian. We just had our first class of students graduate last January, and you know we're about to send out our first set of alumni surveys to them to see how they're doing out there in their jobs. And it's exciting. I'm excited to see what type of feedback that they're going to provide. As I mentioned, we have two program tracks the local track or the remote track. And the actual definition of that is remote is considered anything more than 100 miles from our Newark, New Jersey campus. And I just really wanted to, you know, state again that Rutgers finds all sites for you. So you wouldn't have to worry about locating a site no matter where you were. And these are some of our clerkship affiliates in New Jersey. We use the Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health System, University Hospital, Hackensack University Medical Center, Care One and Kessler facilities for long-term care and rehab. And for the remote track, as I mentioned, Veterans Affairs and Medical Centers before, I didn't say the cities. We use Denver, VA, West Palm, Florida, Indianapolis, Indiana, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Las Vegas, Nevada, Lebanon and Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and Madison, Wisconsin. And some of our VA sites do have a stipend. So um, students will actually be considered an employee and 
receive um, a paycheck for each week that they're at the site. And we just don't know each year which VA site will continue the stipend. So I do not advertise that on our website, but you know, for this upcoming year, um, you know, most of them do have stipends. For admission requirements, we are not in DICUS. So that is something to keep in mind. We have our own link on the graduate portal. That is where you would apply. But we keep all of our time frames in line with DICUS. So our application due date is February 15th. If you are a student that has a DPD, if you are in the DPD track, you would need to submit a verific verification statement with, of your DPD or transcripts of prerequisite courses if you're not in a DPD program. So we accept either type of student. The future education model programs can accept students with the DPD or students that have a bachelor's degree with the required prerequisites that I will go over on the next slide. We also need your resume. You need to have a minimum GPA of a 3.0, two letters of recommendation from professors or academic advisors, your official transcript from any post-secondary institution that you've attended. So if you did some courses at a community college, we would need those transcripts also. If you are an international student, we would need West evaluations or um, TOEFL scores, your personal statement up to 750 words with both short and long-term career goals. We have a supplemental application that is on our website and it does allow you to select local or remote track and you have to rank your top three city preferences. And if you meet all of these requirements, then we schedule you for a face-to-face -face interview by Zoom. So this is an example of what our supplemental application looks like. It is on our website. You just click on the link and you're able to print it. So again, you would select local track or remote and then rank, you know, if Denver was your first choice, you're putting a one, you know, if West Palm is your second two. If you only want to go to Denver, then just only put a one. And you can select local and remote. We used to have it that you can only select one track, but we do allow students to select both tracks. So if you are not a DPD student, you would need to show that you have completed prerequisite courses. And some of this coursework may be a part of your degree and some of it may not be. So you would need to have either a B in these courses or a 3.0 of all these courses combined. So we require anatomy and physiology, a general chemistry, an introductory nutrition course, either experimental foods or food science, microbiology, an organic chemistry, biochemistry, an introduction to vitamin and mineral metabolism, or a macronutrient metabolism course. And the ones that are asterisked, we offer at Rutgers online. Um, but many of these, you know, you may have right at your school. Our program costs for tuition for 42 credits, it is 32,550 a year. The credit is per credit, it's 775 per credit. And this is the same as I mentioned, if you live in New Jersey or if you are an out of state resident. And then we also list on our website, which you can access through this link here, um, all of the other potential program costs and fees that would be associated with being in this program. We also have an active student dietetic association and you are you know, free to access this page even now on Facebook or Instagram and follow the students and you know, what they're doing in classes and in their clerkships. And this is just you know, when things were kind of rough this past spring Students were waiting to get into their sites and, you know, they put something up there. We're all in this together. And, you know, the students really enjoy being a part of the Student Dietetic Association. And we have, again, the application deadline of February 15th, not in DICUS, <laughs> but we do um, keep in line with the, the DICUS. We 
do let students know if they are accepted into the program a week before you would find out um, on match day. This way, if Rutgers was your first choice, you can notify Dykus that you are pulling out of the match and you know that would free up your spot for other students and then you could accept with us. If we were not your first match or your first choice, then you know you just know and then you would have to make a decision and let us know um, the same deadline as um, the Dykus application. So we try and you know stay in line with that, make it easier for everyone. And we have something new. If you are actually interested in moving on to get your doctorate, we have an early entry into our Doctor of Clinical Nutrition into our DCN. And you know this is going to only be offered once a year for the ELMSCN to DCN. And the deadline to apply will be September 1st of the student's fourth semester. Students have to be a matriculated student in the ELMSCN program. They would need to have a GPA of a 3.4. And students would be conditionally accepted pending confirmation of the degree, successful credentialing of the RD, like passing the RD exam, and maintenance of you know, the required GPA of a 3.4 for the remainder of the program. And, you know, if they met everything, then you'd be scheduled for an interview. So I think it does allow you to, um, you know, save 11 credits from the ELMSCN into the DCN. So again, this is something new that we're just implementing actually this upcoming year. And this was our first graduating class. Unfortunately, our class that just graduated this year was not together in person. So when we had our workshops, you know, all three of them last year were, were virtual. So we don't have a group photo. I have group headshots on Zoom, but, um, you know, everyone's happy to be a Rutgers graduate. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you for that overview. That was awesome. I'm going to jump right into the five questions that I ask every program that comes on the podcast. And these were put together with the help of my students here at LSU to make sure that I was asking the questions that they wanted the answers to. So this first one is, what is one thing in particular that you just really love to see when you're reading an applicant's personal statements? I... I love to see that students follow the directions. <laughs> um, we do ask for students to write about their short-term and long-term career goals. And I like, I like to read that. I, so it's more, it's more about reading about their goals and not just following the directions, but I like to see what they wanna achieve in their future, like in the short-term and then in the long-term too. Do you like when students kind of follow the same question format as Dykus, since that kind of reveals a lot more information about the students' why, like their why for dietetics? Or does um, it not matter? It, it really doesn't matter. Like they can tell us why, you know, what I like to see too is like, do they know about our program, why they want to go into dietetics? What are their short their career aspirations. So I want to be able to to know get a little bit of feeling for the student. Can I know a little bit about them from this personal statement? All right. So my second question is a true or false question. So true or false, an applicant's resume should always be one page and one page only. Either way, why? Hmm. <laughs> I would say true. At this point in time, the applicants don't have a professional career as a registered dietitian yet. Um, I don't think there's a lot on there that's going to impact their, their getting a spot in the ELMSCN program. Um, I think later on when they 
go to get a different job, then their resume is definitely going to grow into a CV where they could definitely have more experiences on there. But for the purposes of this application, a lot of what they feel they may want to put on a resume could go into the application. Like I know like for the DICAS application, they're putting the volunteer experience, the, the service, the work, everything in that. Even though on a resume, you're still going to have work experience, um, professional organizations on there. But I think it could definitely fit at this point in life on one page. So what is one thing that an applicant may do, and this could be in the application itself, if they get an interview for the program, um, in any other communication that you might have with them, what is one or more things that they may do that, that might raise red flags for you to where you might think this person's maybe not the best fit for our program? I think if they don't follow directions, say, the application asks for professors or advisors and they don't provide that or, or or say they cannot provide that they need to at least contact us and give an explanation why also if they've maybe asked for a recommendation from someone and the recommendation is not that good Maybe it shouldn't have been one that was submitted in the first place. So I feel like whoever you're asking for references, they really should know you pretty well and be giving you a good reference. In the personal statement, I've, I also think some red flags <laughs> are, I think you want to really be careful with what you're writing about and telling the potential faculty, um, you want it to be pertinent to, to you. Assuming since we don't use DICUS, that probably throws some applicants for a loop because they're probably doing both and they're trying to manage both. And then you throw in the, well, this statement's only 750. So I'm sure you probably get statements that are the thousand word DICUS ones with your- Oh, they're over, but I don't, like, I feel like if they're over and it's a good statement, I'm not that concerned about that. Okay. I feel like it's the content more that matters. All right. So my next question, what is one area of the program that you've been actively working on to try to make even better of an experience for the, uh, the interns or the students? We have been working in several areas each, each year we get feedback from students. We get course evaluations. We, we get the after clerkship experience on preceptor and site evaluation. So, you know, anything that the students tell us, we, we try, try and improve. Um, for, for courses, since it was our first, like the first cohort, we um, might have had a little bit... <laughs> too much in the didactic courses, like for pre-assignments versus post-assignments. So we took that student feedback and more evenly distributed, distributed it. And, you know, now like from cohort two and three, um, it, it was a better flow for students. We had um, students that um, wanted more of a like pediatric experience and some of the clerkship rotations. So we were able to provide that by um, connecting more with um, different children's hospitals in our area. Um, we also had students that wanted eating orders experiences. So we have opportunities for that, that we're able to provide um, students during their clerkship. Um, We've also tried to enhance their interprofessional education experience. So not only do they have activities while they're in didactic classes, but when they're in the local track, they do go to the Rutgers School of Dental Medicine and spend a week with um, the dental students and fellows and spend time also with, we have um, faculty that have 
um, privileges in the dental school. So they will also rotate there, but they, but they get a, a well-rounded feel for interprofessional care outside of the inpatient setting. And then students that are in our remote tracks also will experience that too if the VA sites have a dental clinic or, or they get to spend time with other um, interdisciplinary um, disciplines, whether it's speech language pathology, PT. Um, so we've enhanced that week. Um, so any area, I'm in the process right now of um, reviewing feedback from exit interviews and anything that we can enhance, you know, I'm going to try and do. So my last of the five questions is a two-part question. So the first part is, what do you think are the best three adjectives, descriptors, or phrases that best describe your program overall? I'd say we've, we're innovative, we are caring, <laughs> and supportive. Well, caring and supportive are kind of the same. Um, innovative, supportive, passionate. Second half is very similar. Three adjectives, descriptors, or phrases to describe your ideal applicant for this type of program. Okay, I would say that they are intelligent, empathetic, um, and independent. I just have a few more questions about some program aspects. So do you have a set number of spots per track that you're able to take, like certain number of interns remotely and then a certain number for the, the local? Yes, so we could take 35 total, 20 local and 15 remote. And then since the programs come to be, how many, about how many applicants have you had per year? We, our first year had about 80 applicants and last year we had 66 applicants. How do you, well, I guess it depends on, on when your students have left you. Have you been able to get RD exam pass rate information yet from your graduates? Has that come in? Yes, so, so far um, we're at like 94.5% for that one year pass rate. So 18 out of 19 have passed the exam for our first cohort. Okay. So in within the program, do you integrate exam review throughout or do you set up one of the more well-known review programs for the students or do you leave it up to the students to pursue what's comfortable for them as far as like an official exam review? So in the ethics course that occurs that final fall semester, there, there is a week in that course of exam prep and students have to take um, visual, this year was visual veggies. They had to take it twice in that semester. And then in our workshop, we do a day and a half of exam review by our faculty. And we use the CDR study guide and we buy that for the students, which also has two exam vouchers in there. So, and then we provide recommendations for them for whatever else they would like to um, provide. But the year before we used um, breeding, but the feedback from our students wasn't that good. So that's why we switched to visual veggies for the in-class exam. All right, perfect. Well, those are all the questions that I have. So to close us out today, just give us one quick take home message for potential applicants this year or next year or anytime in the future. So if you are either a DPD student or a student with a bachelor's degree in anything and you take the required prerequisites, you can apply to our program. And in 16 months, you can have a master's degree in clinical nutrition and a verification statement to sit for the RD exam. And you can come to New Jersey or you are able to do this remotely at one of the states that I said. Um, and we, you know, our states keep growing. We try and expand the remote tracks each year. 
So if you think you're a good applicant for this program, you know, definitely apply or reach out to me with questions. Um, my email is on the PowerPoint slide and I'm happy to, you know, talk to you about our program some more. All right, perfect. Well, thank you, Jennifer, for being with me today. And for those at home who would like more information about the Graduate Future Education Model Program at Rutgers and to get in touch with Jennifer, I've provided the link to their program in the description below this video. And as always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode with another awesome dietetic internship. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.